Hello, and welcome back to Leader Up, a podcast by the Army Management Staff College, where we discuss a broad range of leadership and leader development topics with an emphasis on the Army profession. In today's episode, we'll hear from our own Dave Howey and two special guests to discuss the new Army Doctrine publication, 622. Welcome back to our podcast. In July of 2019, the Army released an updated version of Army Doctrine Publication 622, uh, commonly referred to as ADP 622. And I've invited two people to join us today on our podcast to talk about this new version of ADP 622. So I have today Ms. Judy Price, who was one of the editors of ADP 622, and Lieutenant Colonel Greta Railsback, who is the director for the Center for the Army Profession and Leadership. So, uh, Judy, good morning. Thanks for joining us today. Well, good, good morning, David. I appreciate the invite. Thank you. And Colonel Railsback, thank you also for, for coming today and talking with us. Good morning. Thanks for having us. So let's just jump right into uh, this new publication, the updated publication, So big picture-wise, what's different about the July 2019 version of ADP 622? Sure. Uh, Much of the content stays the same, but it provides a common framework and language and expectations, the fundamental set, set of attributes and competencies, the roles and levels of leadership. But some of the changes we made were a revised leadership definition, addition of the dynamics of leadership and the role of followers, and a new depiction of the model. Also, the addition of humility to the attributes in addition to the incorporation of ADRP1. Okay, thank you. And one of the things that you mentioned is that there's a, a new definition of what leadership is. And so can you just tell me what that is and why some of the the words in the definition changed in this version. Sure. Originally, the definition of leadership talked about it being a process. And in the 2019 version, the definition is now leadership is an activity of influence. The reason why is that process generally indicates that it's a step-by-step, you know, A leads to B leads to C. But what we want people to understand is that leadership is not necessarily a linear process and that, um, it's a discretionary activity. It's what leaders do based on the situation, based on the people with them, and, you know, the things like that. So it's an activity. And not necessarily that, you know, leadership in one in one situation with a particular set of followers may not necessarily lead, you know, can't do the same thing with another group or another set of uh, situation. So it, being an activity makes it more um, correct in that it's not a linear process. Okay. And... Um one one of the other things that that you talked about or that that's in in this new version is this term counterproductive leadership and just talk about why that term is in there and what it what what that used to be referred to as sure um in the 2012 version of the ADP 622 we used the term toxic leadership and we introduced negative leadership that came about because there'd been a rash of uh, incidents of senior Uh, commanders and other leaders um, misbehaving and conduct unbecoming and and those sorts of things. Um, It was documented in our 2011 castle. And so essentially that when we put it into doctrine, it's trying to explain that uh, we called it negative leadership. And that was sort of an oxymoron that, you know, leadership is supposed to be the positive things that you do, not necessarily the negative things you do. And so also toxic has a uh, has a lot of baggage as a buzzword, and then you're labeling somebody because of their behavior. When we went to counterproductive leadership, it was not just something we're like, oh, some good idea. It actually was a research process. We worked with ARI, we worked with the DAIG and the JAG, and other entities to come up with the behaviors. Because if you can observe the behaviors, then you know leaders know what's expected. You know this is what's right, and followers know what is or isn't acceptable. And so counterproductive leadership basically puts it into a behavior mode so that it can be observed and not labeling people with a toxic, you know, moniker. And it's, uh, it's is it also that uh, the emphasis when you say it's counterproductive, it's the emphasis on the outcome 
uh, not so much on the on the qualities of the person. Is that is that kind of what you're getting at? Yes, we're looking more at the behaviors themselves. As we look at all the competencies, we talk about behaviors because we can you can understand what a, a good behavior is. Um, but toxic was labeling the people; it wasn't necessarily the behaviors. And so, yes, the outcomes we don't want to label the outcomes. Okay, thank you. I looked at the cover of of this publication. And one of the things that it said is that it supersedes uh, ADRP1. And so is all of the the uh, stuff from ADRP1 included? Is that so when I want to find out about the foundations of my profession, this is this is where I go to to look for all that? David, that's a great question. And that's a question that we've gotten quite a bit from uh, different organizations, not only across TRADOC and CAC, but across the Army, because that was a big change incorporating ADRP-1 into 622. Um, So what we did is incorporate the Army profession and the Army ethic. Um, The foundation of the the Army profession exists within the leadership requirements, model attributes, and competencies, trust, honorable service, military expertise, stewardship of the profession, and esprit de corps. The historical Army ethic loyalty, integrity, duty, selfless service, is part of the Army values. Every member of the Army, military, or civilian is part of a team and functions in the role of a leader and subordinate. Being a good subordinate is part of being an effective leader. Leaders, they don't just lead subordinates, they also lead other leaders. Um, And leaders aren't limited to just those designated by key position or rank or authority. Everyone is a leader and a follower, and leadership isn't just a formal position. So that's what we really tried to incorporate throughout the doctrine without having two separate uh, manuals to go to, really just putting it together in one, uh, the Army Professional Leadership. And that, and that's why the, the new name for this one is it's not just Army leadership, but it includes uh, the, what it means to be part of the, the Army profession, why the name also has changed. One thing I noticed uh, in in this new version is that this phrase that a lot of people are familiar with that I hear uh, when I'm in the classroom, I hear people say all the time this phrase, be no do, that a lot of folks are, are very familiar with. That is back. It's back in this version. And so just talk about why it's back, how it came back how it complements the, 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 the current philosophy of leadership in the Army. Uh, sure. Um, Be no do, um, while it had reduced presence in the prior versions, it was in the text introducing and linking the attributes and competencies within the leadership requirements model. Um, essentially, Be no do is the tagline of the 1999 version of FM 22100, um, which was titled Army Leadership. But in 2006, uh, the directed tag- tagline was competent, confident, and agile. So there was a, a sort of a disconnect there, but we still had be, no do, where we basically said the competencies are what, you're, what you are, your be or no, and, or excuse me, the attributes are what you be and you know, and the competencies are what you do. Um, and then there was no tagline for 2012 version, and then the 2019 version basically doesn't have a tagline, but we clarify that relationship between be, no, do, and then the attributes and competencies. Um, feedback from the field was that some people uh, understood leadership doctrine better as be, no, do, and so we believe that Army leadership has always been about being, so demonstrating the good character and knowing, having the tools and understanding of what needs to be done, and the actual doing, which was providing purpose, direction, and motivation to accomplish the mission and improve the organization. So modern leadership doctrine describes those characteristics, which tend to enable effective leadership, and describes what leaders are responsible for doing. And so overall, leaders are responsible for many things, Lots of competencies. There's ten enumerated, um, and our leadership doctrine is comprehensive source for that describes them all. And then we also have FM six twenty two, which is leader development, which gives those um, those folks interested in developing their competencies. It gives them more how to on how to develop through study and feedback. And so, and so there's also a an FM a field manual six twenty two. Yes. And and then there's other. If you can address this, there are other. Uh, 622 publications. Can you talk about what those are and what functions they serve? Sure. In addition to the ADP 622, which is sort of the main document, FM 622 covers leader development and provides sort of the 
techniques and strategies for improving your leader development uh, behaviors. And then we have two ATPs, Army Techniques Publications, 622.1, which is the counseling process, which walks people through how to counsel. So it gives you how to prepare and how to actually execute a counseling session. And we there is also uh, 622.6, which is Army Team Building. It basically goes into all the information you need as a leader on how to build teams. And so there, so there's four. There's the ADP and then those three others that, that you just talked about. Correct. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Uh, one thing that uh, I think is implied in, in this version of 622 is that leadership is not just something that some people have and others don't. And they're, they're natural leaders, and the ones that aren't natural leaders – just aren't going to be leaders. One thing that I believe is implied is the idea that leadership is something that can be learned and it can be developed within anyone who's willing to, to, to do the right things. And so just talk about that a little bit about how that's, that idea is included in this version of 622. Sure. Well, that's been a, a, a premise for all of our Army doctrine on leadership and leader development is that leadership can be uh, observed and improved, studied, if you will, um, and especially refined through feedback. Uh, some people are able to assess themselves and learn to get better at leading, and some people are better at learning through what others can offer them in the way of feedback and guidance. Um, there's reluctance for some to offer feedback on leadership, sometimes because we think leadership is so tied up in one's personality or self-confidence. We don't want to observe and offer um, instruction or guidance. But that is exactly what the Army policy and doctrine require to develop others, especially subordinates, to improve their leadership abilities through feedback, developmental support, counseling, coaching, and mentoring. Uh, for example, Jack Welch, G's famous CEO, often talked about his most important job was developing his replacement. And so it, in, if we really want to sustain a strong army for the nation, one of the most important roles a leader can take is to develop those who can take their job or um, – who can move up and on and advance and be an effective leader in other jobs. So that's been the Army stance is that we develop our own. And so what, what I think you just said is um, if, if I have this view that, that leadership is about uh, someone's personality, uh, I may uh, overlook opportunities to develop, to develop them if I just say, well, that's just the way that person is. I'm not going to point out how they could improve. Is that, is that kind of where, where the Army's headed with that? Yes, and th that's our stance is about leader development. And the better thing is, is that we can always be better versions of ourselves. Okay, thank you. Um, one other thing that, uh, that I noticed when I was looking through uh, ADP 622 is uh, this phrase, the dynamics of leadership. And it looked like it, it had a connection to a theory that a lot of people are familiar with situational leadership. Uh, and so just talk about um, this, this idea, the dynamics of leadership. Another great question. So the dynamics of leadership involve the leader, the led, followers, and the situation. This is complementary to mission command. Uh, and we know mission command tells leaders to delegate authority and responsibilities to the maximum extent possible. This means when possible, when subordinate leaders are ready and assume authority, are ready to assume authority and responsibility, they should be given the chance. Um, this, this should grow their capabilities in leadership and will also allow the organization to accomplish more over time and, and also for the organization to, um, to address problems at the lowest appropriate level. And so what, what I think you're telling me is that as a leader, I have to know my the followers, the people that I'm leading, to be able to uh, give them the right tasks in the right way uh, at the right time. Is that correct? That's exactly right. Uh, you know, mission command isn't just delegation. It's really understanding what what level of responsibility resides where, and really that dynamic of that leader um, and, and how that that all connects together. So yes, absolutely correct. And I also wanted to ask you about. Uh, what I interpreted as an emphasis on this idea of followership. And we talked about uh, followership in another uh, podcast. And so I, I'm not sure that that term specifically 
followership is is in ADP 622. But just this idea that uh, being a follower is a is a part of effective leadership. So can you just address how this idea is included in ADP 622? Absolutely. Uh, the role of followers is expanded upon in ADP 622, and it acknowledges that leadership is more uh, than about a designated positional leader. Leadership is the energy created by the leader, and that energizes its followers to accomplish the mission according to guidance. Leadership is really about the space between leaders and followers and what ensues from the, the intersection. Following is what naturally comes from leading. The oaths of office we take as civilians and military leaders require us to support and defend the Constitution, and among other things, like allegiance, obligation, to faithfully discharge the duties assigned to us. So that's something that we place great emphasis on in ADP 622. Okay, thank you. And um, one other thing that I wanted to to ask you about is uh, that I noticed that um, the the quotes and the vignettes have have come back uh, into ADP 622, and they were gone uh, for a couple of years. And what caused those to come back? What was the thought process around that? Sure. We had doctrine guidance in 2015 that – Really, the initiative was to remove quotes and vignettes from publications and made them too long, too, too, too verbose. But what we realized in, in, in a manual like 622, when you talk about Army leadership, uh, it was more about how do I connect with the reader and what level do we want to get to? And so in an effort to try to reach the level of that mid-grade leader that we're trying to affect, we added those back in. Okay, thank you. Um... And then the, the last thing I wanted to talk about is this the, the process of updating a publication like this. How long does it take? What happens? How do you decide what goes into it? Uh, and who makes those decisions? How is it all processed? So uh, tell us a little bit about the process of, of updating a publication, uh, not just this one, but uh, any publication – uh, but also uh, whatever is special about this ADP 622. Sure. Um, and working in the doctrine world, there's actually the process is governed by a TRADOC regulation. Imagine that. Uh, it's uh, 2536, and it's called the TRADOC Doctrine Publication Program. The timelines will depend on whether it's a new or an, uh, an update or revision Um of an existing publication, and if there's you know some sort of urgency, if this is a rapid repu- uh, rapid publication, it may take much less because there's emphasis and interest that is driving the process. But typically, the um, the initial step is a, what they call a program directive. It gets a 30 day staffing, and it indicates a content outline and what are the projected timelines. And it's staffed across the army. Generally, it's you know here's what we think we're going to put into the manual. What do you think? Is there anything we're missing? Provide comment. And so that's how we sort of start. Um, and then from there, once the PD is approved, it goes um, uh, to development in, often into an author's draft, um, which is circulated among select stakeholders, and that's prior to the process of developing the initial draft. So an author's draft is sort of select stakeholders that provide input. Are we on the right track? Is there anything we need to add? Or are there topics that we need to develop more? And so once we get the author's draft comments back, then we'll start the process of developing an initial draft, which can be between three and six months, depending on how much information needs to be researched. And then, of course, once that initial draft is completed, it goes out for an Army staffing. Uh, It's typically 45 days um, so that everybody in the Army has a chance to comment on that content. We do get oftentimes lots of really good input from the field of things that may not have been considered as we were developing the main Book, so it's always good to have these staffings army wide. Once they come back, we adjudicate the pro- the comments that we received. It usually takes two to four weeks, and then once we're done with the adjudication, then we're in the process of developing the final draft. So, um, oftentimes, if a book has already existed for a number of years, it's just a revision. We may not go through the initial draft process; we just go straight to a final draft. But once the final draft is completed, once again, it goes out for army staffing, forty five days. And then when all of the comments come back, it's a two- to four-week adjudication period. What's important about a final draft is that where we get critical and major comments, um, that's where the 
you know, sort of the emphasis goes to get those resolved with the field because that could keep it from publication. And so um, they're prioritized and worked at every level to get satisfactory resolution. In the event that, a min- that there are critical and major comments that are not um, resolved, it can invoke what they call a doctrine review and um, approval pro- uh, group, a drag, if you will. Basically, it goes up to the general level um, chain of command for resolution. That can add another two to three months to your timelines. So depending on how that has worked. Uh, but once those decisions are made, you get a final approved draft. It's also known as a final electronic file. And then from there, it's provided for signature by the approval authority um, and then ready for subsequent publication. So the whole process from start to finish, a new publication can take up to 25 months. Revisions by time allotted is about 18 months. But if there are significant controversies or issues, um, it could extend the timelines. For example, we were going through all of the doctrine updates for all of the ADPs pretty much when FM 3O was being developed, but because of all the changes that were going to occur with FM 3O, ADPs were put on hiatus for publication. So like for in the example of ADP 622, we basically were on a two-year delay before we could restart and complete the final draft for publication. And so this one, this this version of ADP 622 – this process was started how, how long ago? In 2016. So it's been about three years to get this one, and, and partially because there were other more important or deemed more important things that's to, correct. to be worked on first. So the, the 3 series was updated. That's operations and how the Army operates. And because of the nature of 3 as what's considered capstone doctrine, so ADP-1 and the 3 they're sort of what everything else flows from. And so 622 being a supporting um, doctrinal source, we basically have to make sure that we are in compliance with what's in 3.0. So it's a, a process of coordinating all of the different drafts. Okay, thank you. And is, it, is, is there anything else that uh, people out there in the Army uh, need to know about this new version of ADP 622? Uh, that we haven't talked about that's important for them? Sure. The one, the one thing, if, if I could emphasize, is uh, we have gotten a lot of comments from the field of the loss of the Army profession, the loss of the Army ethic, because they that we feel the loss of ADPR, a, a, ADRP1. ADRP1. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, so there is a sense of loss. But what I will encourage readers to understand is that that doctrine is not lost, and it's not just in one page, and it's not just in one chapter of ADP 622. It's throughout every chapter and every page. And if you take the time to, to read it and understand it, I think you'll find that we did not lose uh, any, any portion of our doctrine. Okay, thank you. And so I want to thank both of you Uh, on behalf of of our audience and uh, leaders out in the Army for the work that you did to update this publication because it's it's used in the classroom. I I know I've used uh, these publications in the classroom. We refer to them a lot. They help us understand leadership, how to get better, how to make other people better. So I want to thank both of you for the work you did on the publication and for coming in today and uh, talking on our podcast. So uh, Judy Price and Lieutenant Colonel Greta Railsback, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you, David. Thank you, David. If you have any questions about today's episode or this podcast, please check out the description for our email or for our website. Thanks for listening.